one. See, I thought the rule was you weren't supposed to say two or one. You go three so that they don't have to hear all of this. Oh, hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> That's a good point. I'll do that next time. It's I, I was. I it's was, 8.30 prep. I thought I'd start with some, some uh, behind-the-camera production banter. And look who we have or, back. Oh, wait, that, amateur mistake. Rookie. Rookie. Mm -hmm. I gotta make the rookie checklist. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm live. I'm live on my phone so I can see the chat because I can't see the chat from the presentation. Welcome to 8:30 Prep. This is David Cerniglia. I'm Philip McCaffrey. We own 3R Prep, and David is starting a software company. Maybe we could put a plug in your software company. What's your software company called? Uh, if anybody wants to do some coding for free, I'm always looking for developers <laughs> who aren't going to charge us. Peyton, you know how to code. <clears throat> Peyton, uh, Prep Lab is, is Prep Lab is going to be doing some uh, ACT scoring, some cool, simple little ACT score reports right now. Um, we have some bigger things coming down the pike, big analytics stuff, stuff for SAT, stuff for ACT. Um, only stuff for teachers and schools and tutors, though. Not stuff that's going to be available to students. So you'll have to find a tutor. You have to find a tutor, but if you're on 8:30 Prep, we might be able to hook you up. I'm sure. We will totally hook you up. If you go to North Catholic, where 8:30 Prep is that official class, we'll totally hook you up because you actually the sophomores at North Catholic used Prep Lab for used our beta test yeah, for their uh, their SA, their ACT test score that they did at home during the first week of the COVID quarantine. So we got something going on there. That's a, yeah, that's awesome. a huge marketing. All right, today we're going to take a talk about college essays, and this series is called The Pen is Mightier Than the Score, because <laughs> for, for all of you juniors, uh, class of 2021, you really are, uh, can I say screwed on YouTube? You, you're really having, uh, going to have a rough time, because grades are not going to matter as much to colleges, because people, schools have thrown away grades, averaged grades, passed, failed. And then cl uh, classes have been online and students have been wickedly cheating and tests have been canceled. So I do believe there's going to be standardized tests in August, September, October, November. For, so for when you apply. And I also believe colleges will push back application deadlines way into the spring. So and, they'll it, make, and I think they're going to make some schools are making testing a little bit more flexible. Oh yeah, absolutely. which would be right if if you have great scores though, it's certainly not going to hurt you. If you <laughs> if you have a terrible score, uh, say you didn't take the test. If you have a great score, say yeah, baby, I'm Peyton. I took the test. It <laughs> give me money. So Peyton's always here. What's up, Peyton? Peyton? Peyton's usually here. It's no math this week. So as soon as he sees that it's essays, <clears> he's going to drop off. We're not going to be doing any actual writing tonight. We're just going to be talking about writing. We're going to talk about writing. We're not even going to talk about writing. We're going to go a step broader than that. We're going to talk about starting to think about talking about writing. So we're going to ease weight. Wait, wait, wait a second. This. Did you say we're going to talk about talking about writing? Yes. Or are we going to talk about thinking about writing? Do you want to talk about it? Let's talk about it. <laughs> so... Uh, um, ben Esser is on. I took the same elective both semesters for nothing. Yes, Ben, you nothing. got you got high school credit. You, ben, you're still going to get to take the test. You're still going to get to take the test. And and you, have, Ben's been doing really well. So, Ben, for the schools you're looking at, definitely send them the score. Because one of the things is with grades getting mushed, like our local school district here, Ambridge, did away with fourth quarter grades. I know North Catholic is throwing a ton of homework at you Is guys. that what they did? Yeah. Just they're, gone? they gone. Ambridge, cool. the fourth quarter grades are gone. I guess there was no fourth quarter. There was no fourth much. quarter. And some schools are averaging your first three quarters. And colleges are just not going to know what to do. So Ben, definitely take the test, um, and 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 then of course we're going to see what's going to happen. We you know I think restaurants are going to be open by the end of the month. So thank God I'm going to get to go out for a cheeseburger and a beer. So that's that's actually what's really important. Actually, a dozen of wings and a beer is extremely important to me. So. All right, David, what, are we, uh, what about essays? Let's gonna, talk about we're college talk about essays. essays. Uh, so what I wanted to do tonight was just talk about some like super, super, super big picture stuff. Um, for those of you who are uh, those of you who are juniors, um, anybody earlier than that, you probably don't need to be listening quite yet. It's a good idea to, to have a sense of what's coming. I think it's a good idea to start um, journaling and read, jotting down ideas. Because I want you to start thinking about starting to think about your essays so you can start thinking about writing. That's the whole point. 
So what I want to do tonight is just talk about a little bit about what the essays um, look like. We're going to focus mostly on the Common App essays, uh, but we can talk a little bit about uh, the different types of supplemental essays that um, uh, some colleges will, will ask you about. But in terms of content, the types of things that colleges are asking you to write about, uh, looking at the Common App essays is, is a great example uh, because you can see the sort of broad categories of things that colleges typically ask. That sounded super vague. Just start. Um, the first thing is just start. Um, this is one of those things that people wait yeah. until the last minute. And when Absolutely. we go back and ask, um, we get some, uh, uh, some of our former students who will come back and talk to us, like Matt Esser. He still talks to us once in a while. Absolutely. And we'll say to someone like... Poor Ben, poor Ben. We can't stop talking about his brother getting his scholarship we'll say to some, We'll say something to, say something to Matt, and I think we actually asked Matt this question. Um, if you had to go back and give your give your high school self advice in terms of the college right. application process, what would you do? And everyone says I would have started earlier. Even the people who are ultra prepared, they always say they would have started earlier. Um, it takes a lot more work than you think it does, and a lot of it's just sort of thinking. Which yeah. I think a lot of people don't spend time thinking about this. They feel like they need to sit down and draft something and write. So when I say just start, I really just mean start thinking about thinking about this. Well, one of the things that I like to say about just start is get a notebook or a Google document. David and I love uh, students have a Google document because when they come in the office, we can open them up or now Zoom, we could open up the same Google document and we could read them and then we can make comments. One of the things that we do all the time as a student is this sentence sounds stupid and you're an idiot. I mean, we say stuff like that all the time. Now, what, I'm, what I say to students is start with a bulletized list of your life. Put down the list of your life. And Wednesday is going to be great. We're going to have some guests on and it's going to be what not to write. So that's going to be super fun. Is one is one of those guests someone who's who's actually worked in admissions and read essays? Is Correct. that true? Both okay. both of them have. Both of them, that's right. They okay. both have. They both been admissions officers. So they both been admissions officers, both at prestigious universities, one at the University of Pittsburgh, one at the Carnegie Mellon University, which you're familiar with. I've heard of that place. So you've yeah. taught, you've actually taught classes there. What, yeah, until they So get started out. with a list of things in your life, including what happened uh, when you broke your tooth in the seventh grade. Uh, okay, so what are college admissions officers looking for? Um, what are the types of things you're asking to be writing about or thinking about in this case? Um, one of the problems when people start thinking about their lives is they want to give their entire biography. Um, probably not a good idea. Not a lot of space in 650 words. Even our most boring students okay, would have a hard time doing it. Trivia uh, question of the day. Opening line to a movie, I was born a poor black child. Opening line to a movie. All right, free tutoring session for anybody, who, all seven of you who can quote. They're going to Google it. The problem is everybody gets to cheat now with home learning. It doesn't occur to them to Google things all Yes, the time it does. Now. Yes, it well, does. Well, it absolutely it does. All right. Okay, so what are colleges looking for when they're looking at your, looking at your essays? Um, this is really to get a sense of who you are as a three-dimensional human being, uh, apart from just grades and test scores. Even though you might feel like you're just a machine for churning out test answers and papers and projects, um, you're probably not more than that, most of you. Um, and colleges know that, and this is really one of the places that they get to see that. They get to see the types of extracurricular activities that you're involved in. They'll get some of this information from letters of recommendation for schools that require it and for teachers that are willing to write them. Um, but let's take a look at what the uh, common application um, essays look like to try to build a bigger picture of what co these college essays are, are typically uh, typically looking for. Okay, we're going to move on. I have another some of this. Okay, so uh, I'm going to run you through the, the common application prompts. Oh, wait, prompts. did yeah. you see the new common app prompt about COVID-19? Did no. I share that with you? No. No, there's a prompt on there about COVID-19. I feel like that. We should talk. We'll, we'll have to wait until Thursday to see. Okay. Part of me feels like... What does it say? What did you do during COVID-19? Yeah. Is yeah. that what it is? Yeah, it was like, what did I do on my summer vacation? Actually, it, how, how did the global pandemic affect the world and you in it? A lot. <laughs> Next question. Okay, so at the top we have the first Common App essay prompt, um, and then underneath it I have what they're actually asking. And if you look at the six questions, yeah, the, that's pretty the good. COVID one would be a good one. I too. didn't read this before. so. But, the, but really, they're asking one of two things. And one of the things they're really asking is what's important to you as a person or how do you identify yourself? Um, so let's take a look at this. 
Some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that's so meaningful they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, share your story. So who are you? What's important to you? Um, this doesn't I think students automatically want to go to things like ethnicity or religion. Um, those kinds of things are okay. Don't even tell me. It's probably... Who is it? It's Matt, isn't it? No, so it's Matt. Matt is it? Matt Esser is watching. Hey, Matt Esser. <laughs> What's up, buddy? <laughs> Matt Esser's comment is, I heard you were talking about the better Esser brother. <laughs> Matt, I'm is going Is there to... a third brother? <laughs> is there just two of you? There's a sister. Who's the better? I think there's a sister. That's the better brother. That's the sister's <laughs> the, brother. the better bro bro brother. Matt, too much. Ben has to live up to you getting the scholarship <laughs> to Ohio State. Sorry. Okay. So this, so, so this prompt, if you look at this more broadly, what's important to you as a person? How do you identify yourself? What groups do you, what groups do you see yourself as, um, uh, as a part of? Um, it could certainly be something about your ethnicity or race, your family origin, uh, but it could, it could also be something like, you know, identify myself as a marching band geek. I had a great essay of a marching band geek, and Good, I'm glad we didn't just let that. The, say that. the student, the student uh, brought in an essay, and it, it, it was old Cindy. And Cindy, remember old Cindy? I, I ripped up it was Cindy's friend. What was Anne? Anne, Anne that used to work with us. Yeah. I ripped up Anne, his Anne's son's essay and threw it in the trash, and gave him a piece of paper and said, "Start over again." And I said, "Tell me a story. Tell me a unique story." And he said. Um, I shot the winning basket in the last game to make it to the Whitfield playoffs for the basketball team. At the buzzer, made the basket, and we won. And at the uh, uh, state championship football game, I played the solo for the marching band at halftime. So I made him draw a Venn diagram for Case Western University and shows that the number of people on the basketball team and the number of people on the marching band didn't intersect. He was the only one. So there was an intersection of one, and it was him, and he wrote it as a Venn diagram. They quoted his essay in his acceptance letter. Oh, that's right. You told me that. Yeah, that's super that was, cool. It was totally the badass. So, um, Don't drive uh, like my brother. Think, bro think broadly. <laughs> Don't drive like my brother. Oh, the Esser okay. brothers. <laughs> Click and clack the tap at brothers. <laughs> my, my, what's Advance my slide. Go to the next slide. Can I go to the next slide? Why are there so many slides? With the same slide. End of the slide. <gasps> What happened to the rest of my slides? Ooh. You sent me Is the wrong slideshow. Well, you better start Did talking quickly. Okay. So the common app, the common app essay questions are, real, are are asking really one of two things. This one, which is what's important to you, how do you identify yourself as a person? You can think about sort of what your values are, the things that you really care about. The second one is some version of how have you grown or changed or learned? What's keep the time that you changed keep, your mind keep, about something? Keep talking. Oh, pull it up on. I'm going to well, pull it up. Google. Yeah, I am. Um, Let me know when you had it. Okay, just go off the... Yo, yeah. I'm telling you what to do. I feel bad. I accidentally bad. just copy the same slide a thousand times. Hold on. You keep talking. Boring, David's going to talk. Is, tortoise is all the way down, guys. It's the same. And I'm going to go on to keep, keep talking. Bertrand Russell thing. Okay. Um, how do you identify yourself? How have you grown, grown or changed or learned? So we assume that in the 16, 17, 18 years that you've been alive... Um, that you're not exactly the same as you've been at any other point in those 16 or 17 years. What have you changed your mind about? Um, in what ways have you grown? In what ways have you expanded yourself? In what ways um, have you challenged yourself? So those are the two uh, basic categories of question. I'm excited to see the COVID one. Um, the seventh essay prompt of the six, so there are three, who are you, what's important to you? There are three, how have you, how have you grown or changed or learned? Do I have them in there? That's not the right one. Yeah. That's the what not to, that's the like what not to write and what to write. write just pull it. up, just Google, just Google Common App essay prompts and pull up the page from the Common App. You're Website. making this hard so on take me a look now. at it. I took all this time to carefully copy the exact same slide. They almost look like they're identical. That's how close they are. This is bad TV, guys. It's bad, this is bad TV. <laughs> Thank you. It's great TV. Actually, people love it when we screw up. Uh, common app. Right. Right there. That's right, right there. Is it there? Common app. We should pull, why don't you pull up the screen of uh, Phil, Phil Googling stuff? That may be there more. There we go. You keep talking. Engaging. Oh, jeez. Oh, they make me sign No, they're not. In. Keep, keep Googling. Um, so at this point in the year, heading towards the end of the academic year, thinking about applications that are going to be due earliest, say, November 1st, November 15th for early admission, early action, early decision. 
What it's a good idea to start thinking about now is taking a survey of all of the essays, looking carefully at the common app essays, which as you can see, we've carefully provided for you here, and then taking the rough list of the colleges that you think that you might be applying to and scanning through to see if they have any supplemental essays or anything else that, um, anything else that they require. If you get that broad sense of being man. able to look at all of them together, uh, by looking at all of the essays together, it'll help you plan and will ultimately save you an enormous amount of time. Okay, so number two, the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success, a, ca a time that you face a challenge, setback, or failure. So that's how have you grown or changed or learned. I think a lot of these are about the transition from being a, a child to an adult, an adolescent to an adult, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. So this one, the failure one's pretty good. Yes. I had a student a couple of years ago write about um, being cut from a, uh, the baseball team, and baseball was his favorite sport. And then he played golf for a year, but then he went back and practiced baseball and made the baseball team again. I thought that was a really good essay. That's super cool. Yeah, he got cut from the baseball essays. team. I don't love sports essays. Yeah, uh, sports essays are tough. We'll, let, we'll get them what not to write. Okay, it's like at number three. Time that you questioned or challenged an idea or belief. How have you grown or changed or learned? This is a great one if you're definitely passionate about something, like an environmentalist, and you don't like it or... Um, Grace, our badass that went to USC on a full scholarship, she started uh, the LGBTQ Alliance at her high school mm -hmm. and then started a regional group of alliances of LGBTQ um, alliances. So she had the Alliance of the Alliances. So she had other high schools meeting together to talk about issues and she got a full scholarship. So I thought her essay was pretty good. It's pretty awesome. Uh, describe a problem you solved or that you'd like to solve, uh, an intellectual problem or research query, an ethical dilemma. <clears throat> this question's ultimately what's important to you. Yeah. Who are you or what's important to you? Because the it's problems like that you want to solve say something about the things that you care about. Yeah. yeah. If you want to be a medical doctor, write about solving things like global pandemics. <laughs> I'm no sorry. one will be submitting essays. Nobody will be anything. submitting that essay at all. No. Um, environmentalist, engineer, what you'd like to solve, what and what what would you like to do? You'd um, uh, why you would like to be Elon Musk would be mine with my Tesla battery in my basement, which I have. Well, see, he's not even going to have a Tesla battery in his basement because he's selling all of his houses. <laughs> see that he's getting he's going uh, Elon's going minimal. He's getting rid of all, all of his houses. He is. A, a few dozen of his houses. Right. <laughs> all. Okay, an accomplishment event realization that sparked a period of personal growth. How have you grown or changed your learn? <laughs> a topic or idea you find so engaging it makes you lose track of all time. Why does it captivate you? Don't write about Fortnite. Okay, one of my... Have you ever had anyone try to write about Fortnite? Have you had anyone... I, I did, about... I did. I had a student write an essay on why video gaming is a transferable <clears> skill <throat> And we compared it to why, was it Plato that said watching uh, Greek drama was a waste of time for teenagers? And then we looked up, remember that old SAT essay about that waste of time? And we pulled up. Um, like Plato didn't like TikTok. I think that was yeah. awesome. Plus, well, there was a critique of, of Shakespeare in his lifetime that it was like junk TV. And so now, of course, it's classic literature. So he wrote about how in a um, uh, hundred years, people will be looking at the original video game players as the leaders of the of the new world order of how things are done. I buy it. I don't remember that. Uh, uh, do you buy that? Absolutely. Do you think do you think it's a good skill? Oh yeah. We got to put a microphone by you. We're getting a little microphone attached <laughs> over there. Damien, Damien's got to come across. Say hello to Damien. Hi. Okay, and then the, the last one, and I haven't had anyone do this yet, um, an essay on a topic of your choice. Write about anything you want. Uh, too much pressure for most people. But if you wanted to write this, they're probably gonna, you're probably going to want to talk about something like how do you identify yourself, what's important to you, or how Where's have you grown COVID? or changed or learned? Where's the COVID one? What do you think? Oh, this, is, this is even worse. Now, now I'm worried that Damien's going to tell us it's bad TV. I was, we're just both just staring at a screen silently. What was on the tribe, so. Pretty exciting. It was on the tribe. Okay, so at this point in the year, start thinking about the essays. Start thinking about big picture stuff. Start thinking about stories. Um, it doesn't have to be right. Write a story. It, write a true story. It, it doesn't have to be. Um, uh, I would strongly encourage you not not to try to position yourself as being unique, uh, because you're probably not. Well, 
you're not. You are not a in any you real, are not in any a purple sense. you are not a purple unicorn. So you are just a normal high school student, right? About being a normal high school student. But what is unique about you? Uh, I had a student write it's a 650 words. 650 right? words. I had a student write 300 words about something that was important to him, and 350 words about a problem he'd like to solve. And he submitted two essays, and he got into his first choice of college. I thought that was totally badass too. My favorite essay of all time, I have to mention It's now a double major. Yeah, no, it's a dual major. That was good. Um, my favorite essay of all time was an adopted Chinese girl whose parents, I better be careful because they're college, they're college counselors. Her dad was a school psychologist. Her mother is a school counselor. And so her parents were like, psychologist, liberal arts, maybe we're going to grow you up. And so she was adopted from China. And they moved to this neighborhood that I won't mention that's right next door, mm -hmm. but it rhymes with north of Allegheny. So they moved into that neighborhood in that kind of area. It was one of those type of school districts, you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about, where there's a lot of Asian students. And so all of the other Asian students had tiger moms, and they had, she had parents who cared about how she felt. She was the most conflicted person. And so she, the beginning of her essay was, I hate people. And her mother brought it into me, and we were still in Crazy Mocha days. And we're sitting in Crazy Mocha, and she brought it into me, printed out, and I read it. And I freaked out on how much I loved it, and I was like, totally use this. But we had to change the um, the final paragraph. And this is one of the few that I ever made a suggestion, which was she wrote, "I no longer hate people." And I said, "But put in parentheses." This is the only time I think I ever added a whole sentence, which was, "Sometimes I still do." She got into her first choice of college. Well. Yeah, we do. We do. Sometimes we hate a people. Misanthrope in us. <laughs> a little misanthrope. The important thing. Did at this you point, see what he just did listen, with vocabulary there, Damian Metcalf? We're gonna misanthrope. The important thing. The important thing. The important thing here is get started. Um, Googling the Colin App essay prompts and taking a look at these again would go a long way. Um, you know, sending a direct message to Matt Esser. I think that he'll offer to help anybody who wants unlimited editing. No charge, Matt. Look. Wait a second. I've read Matt Esser's essays. Dude, the dude can't charge five bucks an hour. No, sorry. that's so mean. No, he's an engineer, dude. I mean, he's in a high. What, Matt? What's your Matt? Is you, Matt? If you're still on, what's your major? Is he Mecky? Is he? Yeah. Are you a Mecky? Uh, Mecky's know. can't write. I couldn't write until that's I true. met you. Until you corrected every better. every email I ever wrote. Now my grammar is going to be so much better because Damien Metcalf's in the room. Uh, okay, what are we doing tomorrow? Tomorrow you want, you want is to do a preview of tomorrow. Tomorrow's what to I write. I just got here and I'm right. What's right? What's right? Yeah, we're going to talk about what's right, and then to when not to write. Wednesday is what not to write. Wednesday's going to be awesome. That's probably a more important one. Come so, see what to write, but what not to write is just tomorrow. We're going to have examples of what to write. We're going to have. We're going to go through our essay bank. And we're gonna have some problems. I, I got a couple. I got a couple of good before and afters. Um, we got Serene's. I got Serene's permission to use it. I'm gonna go through. I'll send it to you. I'll I'll, I'll give it to you. Uh, Serene Ali, who I'll text and have her join in. Um, wrote, that would be cool. Yeah, she wrote a super unbelievably good essay. As a matter of fact, she's uh, Asian, and she's in a she's in a group of. Uh, pocky kids that all get together in the summertime in a camp and so she started helping other kids with their essays so she shared which I still have access to she shared her essay Google Drive and then she read the girl's essay the girl literally submitted Serene's essay literally like the exact essay so Serene told me about that she was like I'm not helping anybody I'm never sharing my Google Drive ever again Be smart. no the girl literally changed it on her Google Drive like typed over Saw Serene, it? yeah, no, didn't typed like, over, co didn't copy and didn't copy and paste it into her own document. She literally typed Seek on Serene's. It. So there, Serene's original essay is gone. It's now this butchered uh, copy that this other girl put on her Common App essay. Very nice. So the other girl will go unnamed. <laughs> <laughs> I never met her. Serene told me about it over dinner. All right, I'm Phil McCaffrey. David this Sonigula. Is, this is David Sonigula. That's Damien Metcalf. Say goodnight, Damien. Good night. We'll see you tomorrow for what to write on your essay.